Hello, today I want to show you how to make these fun leopard print beaded fringe earrings. If you would like to follow along with the pattern, you could find the links below to purchase it in my Etsy store or my Shopify store. Um, if you don't have the pattern, don't worry, you're still going to learn a lot of great beading techniques here and how to build a fringe earring with double brick stitch. Here's a look at the pattern so you can see what that looks like. Um, and other than that, let's just take a look at our supply list and get going on this project. Okay, so let's take a look at our supplies we're using today. The beads I'm using are Miyuki Delica beads in a size 11, and you can find the exact um, color numbers on the pattern. I have a size 12 beading needle. I have these lever back ear wires. I have these, um, they're called thread guards or wire guards, depending on where you're buying them from. I'm using a nylon beading thread. Um, this is the one I'm going to use for the fringe. It's got a nice flow to it. Um, this is a Japanese beading thread. These are my clippers. You could use scissors as well. And I'm using a six pound weight fire line. This I use for the top part of the earring because it gives it more structure. Additionally, I have my pattern ready to go to follow along. And that's it. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to cut four to five feet of my fire line and thread my beading needle. There we go. We have that ready. And then I'm going to pick up the first four beads on my pattern. Okay, we have our first four beads and we're going to slide those down towards the tail end of our thread, leaving uh, at least three to four inch tail so we can weave it back in later. So I have those beads all lined up. I'm going to take my needle around and come back up through the first two beads like that. So we're making a little loop around. So I pull that through. And that will force the beads to sit together next to each other like this. And then I bring my needle down through the second two beads. So I'm looping back around. And then I'm going to come up through the first two beads again. Like so. And then finally down through the second two beads again. Now it's only for these first two groups of beads that you loop around twice. So now we're bringing that back down and that's just so it's extra secure the first two beads. From here on out, we're just going to add two beads at a time and build up this little ladder. So I pick up my next two beads in my pattern and then I'm going to come down through those last beads I just added. Like so. And then I come back up through the newest beads that I've added. Pull that tightly. You don't want gaps in between your beads because this row is going to be our foundation row. So now we pick up our next two beads and we come up through those last beads we just added. Pull that tightly and now we're going to come down through the newest beads like so. And then we pick up our next two beads and we come down through the last beads. There we go. And now we come up through those beads we've just added. And we're going to continue to add beads two at a time for this row until we get to the end of the row. This row is 17 groups of two beads wide. 
So we keep going on this way. We add our next two beads. And make sure you're following along with the pattern. If you're not following along with the pattern, that's fine. But if you are using the pattern, you want to definitely take a look each time. Make sure your beads are in the right place. And now I come down through those beads that I've just added. And I hope by now you're getting the hang of this and your little bat ladder is coming together like so. And I am going to just keep on beading here. You keep beading on your side. And when you get to the end of that row of 17, meet me back here and we will start our first row of brick stitch. Okay, so here we are. I have finished my row of 17 and I hope you have too. Well done. And now we're going to get started with brick stitch. If you take a look at your row of ladder stitch, you'll see there are little sort of thread bridges in between each section of beads. We're going to use these thread bridges to attach our next row. So first of all, I like to always hold my beadwork in my non-dominant hand, so I'm working away from it. So I'm starting there. I'm picking up four, the first four beads in the next row of my pattern. And then I'm going to bring my needle underneath the second thread bridge like this. So bring it under the thread bridge. I have four beads there. And now I'm going to take my needle and come back up through the second two beads of those four beads I've just added. Sorry for the bad camera work here. You'll see it in a second. There we go. So I'm coming back up through the second two beads. And I'm going to pull that tightly. And you'll see they're not sitting quite right. So we bring our needle down through the first two beads. We're going to bring it down through the first two beads. And then to get these sitting perfectly, we come back up through the second two beads again. And then they will sit the way they are supposed to. Okay, I'll pull that. And sometimes you tell them where you want them to go with your finger. But there we go, that's what we have. So from now on, we're adding two beads at a time. So pick up two beads, come underneath the next thread bridge. like so. Move your tail out of the way if it gets stuck like mine just did. And then you bring your needle back up through those two beads you just added. And it's that simple. It's only the first two beads of the row that are a bit more complicated. From here on out we're just adding two beads at a time. So I pick up my next two beads, go under the next thread bridge, And then I simply come right back up through those two beads and pull tight. There we go. We continue building our row this way. So we pick up our next two beads. Go underneath the next thread bridge. And then we come back up through those two beads. Now you will continue to build your row this way. There will be 17 sets, I mean, sorry, 16 sets of two beads in this row. Um, I'm going to continue with my row and you continue with yours and meet me back here. And I will show you how to start a row of brick stitch again because sometimes that's the trickiest part. Um, so I just want to go over that with you one more time to make sure you have it down. Um, so you keep working and meet me back here when you're ready to start your next row.
Okay, so here we are. We finished our second row of our earring. Uh, I hope it looks really beautiful and you're quite proud of yourself. And I just want to walk you through starting a row of brick stitch again. Um, see, it would be easy to just add two, but then what would happen is your thread would end up on the outside. So the way I'm showing you, your thread is hidden and it's a much more professional and secure finish. So we pick up our four beads. We bring our needle under the second thread bridge. And then we bring our needle up through the second two of those four beads. And then we come down through the first two of those four beads. And then we come up through the second two again, and then all of the beads will sit perfectly like they're supposed to. So we come up through here, pull that, sometimes give them a little wiggle, and there you go. And you're ready to continue adding to your row two at a time, just as we did before. And you're gonna continue weaving that way until you get to the top of your pyramid. And when you get there, meet me back here and we're going to add our wire guard. Okay, so here we are at the top of our pyramid. Your last row should have three sets of two beads. And now it's time for us to add our wire guard. So I'm going to pick up the wire guard and you'll see there are little holes at the bottom of it. I'm gonna put my needle through the hole at the bottom of the wire guard, slide it down to my beadwork, and then bring my needle back through the hole on the other side of the wire guard, and then also down through the outside two beads of my beadwork. like so. And as you pull it through, you want to make sure your string stays in the little channel on the wire guard. Um, you don't want it to fall out because then the thread is not guarded by the guard. Um, so now I'm bringing my needle down into the next row of my beadwork because I want to bring it around and back up through the first row of that wire, the first hole in that wire guard. So I'm finding a path down and then back up. So I go down one row, over, and then up one row, back to the beads that started the wire guard. So right like that, through the beads and through the wire guard. So I just want to double that to make sure it's extra secure because the wire guard and all of the thread right here are holding all of the tension of your earrings. So you want that to be extra secure. So now I'm coming back down through the other side and then into the beadwork, like so. And pull that and make sure that stays in that little channel there. And now I'm gonna just work my needle down into my beadwork until I find two beads where I want to loop my thread around. Um, because my thread is white, I'm just trying to make sure I get to a point where I can loop around two white beads just because it'll hide the thread better than if I were to loop it around a black bead. So here I am. I found two groups of two beads next to each other where I'm going to just loop my thread around. Um, this creates tension and will, create, and will keep the thread from coming undone. So I want to go around those two beads twice. Here I am making my second loop around. And as soon as I get untangled here, you will see that I will just tighten that loop and then I'm ready to clip that. Now with the tail at the end from where we started, 
I'm going to do the same exact thing. Weave that into the work, loop it around two beads, and then you can clip it. Here, after I've looped, I'm just going to take it down one or two more before I clip it. Um, I just like to be extra secure. Um, but So do that with all of your threads. And you would use that same technique if you had to start or stop a thread in the middle of your work as well. So I'm going to clip that. And I will then weave in the tail from the end and meet me back here and we'll start our fringe. Okay, so now we need to add our nylon thread for the fringe part of the earring. Um, so I am going to cut about four feet of this thread. And then it's very important with this thread that you stretch it. It's a bit of a stretchy thread and you don't want it to stretch out later on your work. So just put it between your hands, pull it tight. You'll feel it sort of stretchy. I mean, obviously don't pull it so tight that it breaks, but you'll feel it, the stretch sort of go out of it. Um, and I've done that now and I have my needle threaded and I am going to figure out what side I'm starting on um, by looking at my pattern. So I know that I want that side to match up with the fringe on the bottom. So that's the side I'm going to start on and I'm going to start a couple of rows up and anchor my thread. And I anchor my thread the same way we ended our thread. So I am going to pull it through, hold a little tail there so it doesn't slip out. And then I'm just going to loop around two sets of two beads to anchor the thread. So I loop around two times. And then after that, I will work my needle down to the outside edge where I want to start my first row of fringe. So here I am. That's one loop. I'm testing to see that it's tight. And then I'm going to do another loop. Sorry for the really bad camera <laughs> work here. Um, and now I'm able to come down the beadwork on the outside edge until I get to the place where we're starting that first row of fringe. Here we go. We can see that now. I'm in the row above where we're going to start. And now I'm entering the row of ladder stitch on the outside edge. And that's where we're going to begin our fringe. Okay, so now I'm ready to pick up the beads in my first row of fringe. Um, there are quite a lot of beads in each row, like 20 to 30. So we are going to fast forward through that in a second. So you don't have to watch me pick up all of those beads. It's like watching paint dry. So let's see, here we go. We have the beads now. Um, I've added all the beads in the pattern and then I'm gonna pick up my end bead. So I'm going to pass back through the beads in the row of fringe and my end bead will catch them. So I come back up through all of those beads. Sometimes you can't get them all at once. So I have the first section of beads and then you see those two little pink beads I missed. So I'm going to get in there now and then I bring my needle back up through the first two beads in my ladder stitch row, like so. Pull that through, make sure I didn't miss any beads. And then I'm going to come back down through the ladder stitch row in the next two beads in the ladder stitch row, like so. Go slowly so we don't get knots. And now we have our first row of fringe. So for the second row, we do the same exact thing. We're going to add all of those beads. Make sure we're following the pattern and counting and double checking. And here we go. We have our beads by magic. And then we're going to add the end bead of that row of fringe. And then bring your needle back through the fringe beads. I find it's easier to do it when you're... Um, work is lying down like that and then bring your needle through the row of ladder stitch as well the second two beads in the ladder stitch and there you go 
and then you're going to bring your needle down through the next two beads in the row of ladder stitch and you're ready to add your next row of fringe. Okay, we'll take one more look at this, adding my beads for my third row of fringe. I pick up my end bead, bring my needle back through the entire row of fringe, and then also through the two beads in the ladder stitch row. Okay, so see I've missed a few beads there, so I make sure I get through all of them. And then through the two beads in the ladder stitch row. And always, before you move on to the next row of fringe, just lie your beads down, take a look, make sure your fringe is looking right, because having to go back and fix fringe patterns are, is super annoying. So just double check, check, double check. Um, and also you want to make sure your fringe is tight and you don't have gaps. You don't want it to be too tight because then it doesn't flow. So just always stop in between and take a look at your fringe. I like to lie it down, make sure everyone's sitting where it needs to. So here we are on our very last row of fringe. Um, I hope you are here too. It's a very exciting. We come through the last row in the same technique that we've done with all of the other rows. Coming up through that last row of ladder stitch, the last two beads in the ladder stitch. And then I'm going to take my needle up through the beadwork until I find two beads where I want to anchor this thread. One last check of the fringe, make sure everything looks good. And now I'm going to work up I'm working up the outside here and I want to find two white beads that I could wrap around um, so my thread isn't hidden. Um, I want to avoid the black beads since I'm using a white thread. So here we go. This is where I'm going to do that. Um, we should be good at this by now. So I'm basically just going to anchor this thread, wrap it around, get rid of it clip any end threads, and then we're ready to add our ear wire. Oh, I'm just finishing this up. I had accidentally pulled my needle off. Um, so I've re-thread my needle, and I'm going to finish up that little loop around. Um, I also want to mention with this pattern, obviously it's pink and black, but what I love about this pattern is that you can change the pink to whatever color is your color, and then these earrings go with everything. Um, I'm thinking about making myself a more neutral pair with sort of brown in the middle. Um, but I hope you enjoy this pattern and I hope you're enjoying this technique. And I am here, I'm just securing it a second time. Um, when I end it, I like to, you know, just make sure it's extra secure, though it's actually not super necessary. Okay, so that is ready to go, looking beautiful. I'm just going to clip my threads and then I am ready to add my lever back ear wire. Okay, so here we are with the ear wire. Um, it has a little loop at the bottom and I'm just going to take my pliers and bend that away. You don't want to bend it down, you want to bend it sort of forward, um, horizontally. And then I am going to bend it back. And you could also add this if you don't have pliers. You could add it when you add your wire guard. Just loop it on there with your wire guard. And actually, it's the best way to do it, but I keep forgetting to do that when I'm making the videos. So either way works. This is the way I'm doing it today. And there we go. We have a finished earring. I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you have stuck around to the end. If you have stuck around to the end, thank you so much. And I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, check out my other patterns. I'm going to be adding two new videos a week. So I hope you'll find something fun for you and all of your friends here. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.